Rachel, I thought I was gonna sit down with you two and just have a couple of dumplings and, and just, how did this happen? Is this what happens here? Yeah, I think the head chef kind of liked you too. You think the chef kind of <laughs> digs so. me? Definitely. I've got an in here. <laughs> yeah. I might be back for a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here we are at Jingfang. Anytime I've come to eat here, there are so many dishes. And the unusual way that it's wheeled around on the carts, I mean, it almost feels like street food, you know, that I think of as sort of casual, but there's nothing casual about what you serve here. What do you serve here? We serve traditional Cantonese-style dim sum and Cantonese cuisine. Why Cantonese? I mean, don't you think as Americans, we know more about Sichuan food, for example? Cantonese food's been around for thousands of years. It's actually more... Mild, no? Mild, actually. Food it's is not like... about the punch of spice no, no. It's all the, the time. It's the so-called original taste. The original taste. For Chinese cuisine, this is where you would begin. This is the origin of the flavors. I can do this. I've made a million souffles and a million omelets. I can make one good dumpling. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. How many of these has he made in his life? Come on. He's making like 600 pieces a day for 30 years. Then do the 600 pieces a day for 30, for 30 years. And then do the math. So if we do the math on that, do you realize, that, does he know that that's six and a half million dumplings? Use this part here and to press it, just like that. Just like that. Right. You have to be yeah. kidding me. He's made 10 million. I've made one. Oh, oh, come on, that. slow down, slow down, slow down. This is a shrimp dumpling. <laughs> look, at, it's supposed to look like this. I see. Okay, one more time. This guy. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, look. I'm committing dumpling homicide. He takes it from me after a while. Oh, I see. You go all the only one way. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's the idea. It's not too bad. Not too bad. I'll take it. You can see the handiwork of an amateur right here, but an enthusiastic amateur. Honestly, there's no other place like this. There's so many moving parts. How many items could you eat on the floor at one time? On a regular weekend, you'll probably see at least 150 or 200 different items rolling around. I mean, how many servers would you have on the floor? Like 50? Probably like 65, 70. And then how many people will be working in the kitchen? Like 40, yeah. 40. Don't forget the backbone of the restaurants, the dish guys. How many dishwashers are there? Probably like 16. 16 dishwashers? Yeah. When we were next door, that's where the restaurant first started. And my grandfather was a plumber. So he fixed the restaurant's plumbing. Yeah. And he had a small interest in the yeah, restaurant. Yeah, but then the restaurant wasn't doing really well in the beginning. He racked up a huge bill with them, so he converted some of these invoices and the debt that they owed him into ownership stake. You're saying your, grand, your father, by fixing the pipes, slowly but surely ended up owning this restaurant. What did you teach him and what, is, and what, did, what did you learn from him? I obviously, I also didn't start in this business. I'm also not a cook. What do you do? I started off in investment banking, actually. So in this finance. is a giant series yeah. of generational accidents. Yeah. mindset of the people here were still very, very old and, you know, we needed to kind of upgrade a little bit. And then when he comes in and because they're younger generation, they brought in a lot of uh, uh, younger ideas with the old kind of food, right? So young ideas with old food. Right. But, you know, you're the accountant, like, I have no idea what I ordered, no idea what I'm going <laughs> to pay. How is this modern? That's not modern at all, but the reason why we keep that is because that's part of the atmosphere. And people like it when they come in here and they have the card and the stamps. Uh, that was actually one of the first things that we were thinking about to change. And then the more we looked at it, we like it because this kind of stuff doesn't exist anymore. It's the culture. Yeah, it's the culture. 
All right, so I've eaten Peking duck many times, but I don't want to do it the wrong way around here, because... Uh, there's no such thing called way, way or long, wrong way. Well, the way we do it is... Oh, OK. You just grab a piece of duck. The meat. Yeah. And then you can dip it in the sauce if you like. Of course, I'm going to do the whole thing. We're going <laughs> whole magilla here. Take a piece of cucumber and the scallion. And that's it. It's just like a taco, but you know, we came first, so really the taco is more like a Peking duck sandwich. Oh, yeah. The cucumber is very important. Yeah. So this is, this is my childhood favorite dish. I'm going to get you some here. This is the beef chow fun. So there are onions and scallions in this mix with sesame. Did your wife make this when he was growing up or no? Does your no, wife no. cook? Uh, yeah. But you'd rather come here or what? Of course. 